the first thing in dealing with mistakes that we make when we draw is to stop and I think very important to think why is making mistakes or more often just the fear of making mistakes such a problem when we draw. It's quite common for people to walk around not able to actually sit down and start a drawing because of a fear that they will make a mistake. Personally, I spent many drawings walking around the house finding other things to do before I actually sat down to start them. Some, sadly, I suspect I never started at all. But for many people, it's, it's actually even more frustrating than just this because I can get a drawing half done and if I don't make a mistake, if it's actually turning out the way I want it to turn out, the fear that I'm going to ruin the perfect work that I've already done can become very paralyzing. It can make me afraid of finishing the drawing because I fear I'm going to mess it up. And I end up in this state of paralysis, which is just overwhelmingly tense and unpleasant. But the truth is, and this is what we all have to realize and give ourselves some understanding of, is that if I'm learning to do anything at all, it doesn't matter what it is, that mistakes are a natural and a necessary part of the learning process. Teachers expect their students to make mistakes. Imagine learning the piano and every wrong note you hit, you felt you had to get up and leave, that you were so upset with yourself or so discouraged that you couldn't continue because you, you pressed some wrong notes. Or imagine learning football and walking off the field if you miss the ball because you just get so discouraged and think, I can't do this, I'm wasting my time. So why, why when we learn to draw, are mistakes such a big deal for so many of us? And I think one reason is we mistakenly think we're creating artworks when we're not, or we're not yet creating artworks. We're still learning to draw. The artworks will come later, perhaps. And perhaps some of our drawing exercises might even be artworks, but it's possibly more coincidence than expertise. Because for the first period of our drawing life, we need to appreciate that we're not producing artworks. We're learning a skill and we're practicing and we're doing exercises. And so they don't have to be perfect. We're not putting them into an ex exhibition. So there is no pressure. And we can actually experiment and take risks because of this. And taking risks is also a very important part of learning. And it's only if we're free to make mistakes, because in our mind we're learning, we're not, we're not already experts creating artworks. We're still learning, so we are free to make mistakes. And if you hadn't realized, the video that you're watching, this drawing of a rotunda, is not one that directly links with this. It just saves you looking at my face while I talk about this. But there are a number of mistakes in it, which fortunately I could hide fairly readily. Pay attention to the top of the dome when it happens. But really, if we're learning a skill, then there's no pressure on us because we're learning and mistakes are part of that and we can embrace that. So once we're free to make mistakes without it being a, a psychological disaster, we can start to learn how to deal with the mistakes that we do make in the best way possible. Now by mistake, I mean any line or mark that's not in a place we want it to be. Maybe our line went too far. Maybe it didn't meet up with a line it was meant to meet up with. Maybe it's wobbled in the wrong place. Maybe it's at the wrong angle. But whatever mistake we make, and, and this isn't a judgmental term, it's, it's just a handy term to mean something that's not where we intended it to be. The first thing is firstly, not to panic. Because in my experience, a mistake never looks as bad as it looks when we first make it. Most mistakes happen very early in our drawing or most significant errors are likely to happen early in our drawing because at the start we don't have anything on our paper to reference from or to align with or to read angles from or to use for spacing or to get a sense of proportion. And all this blank paper in my mind is like a spotlight on our mistake. 
the line that's angled wrong is most often my mistake early on in a drawing where I haven't quite got the perspective angle of some part of architecture steep enough. It looks all the more obvious for all the, the blank paper. However, what I need to realize is that that line in the wrong place is actually going to make it easier for me to put the line in the correct place. Because if I look at my wrong line, how much more does it need to be angled upwards or downwards to put it in the right place? When I draw that line now a second time, it's easier to see exactly where it has to go. We might only have been drawing for two, three, four, five minutes. But if we always start again, we don't learn the skill of dealing with these mistakes. We don't learn all the tricks of the trade that we can gather in our, in our drawing toolbox to deal with situations like this in future drawings. Related to not finishing our drawings, is there are a lot of drawing skills that we only learn in the second half of the drawing because we only need them, we use them in the second half of the drawing. And so if we, for any reason, don't finish our drawings, then there's really you know, half of the skills that we need to do a drawing that we're really getting very little practice in. The second half of the drawing skills are as important, if not more important, because that's where we really pull out of our paper with our marks the overall effect that we want. That's where we fine tune our drawing. That's where we make the adjustments, where we improve on the photo, where we do things that the photographer couldn't do because we're controlling our marks to create effect. What's the strategy then for dealing with mistakes? The first step is to correct the line. Now I've just said it's easier to see where the correct line needs to be. So I need to pretend though the wrong line's not there and put the correct line in. And this works really well because our brain wants to see what it expects to see, not just with our drawings, but in life. Our brains have seen, for instance, so many buildings that it knows without thinking how a building should look, at least approximately, from a certain viewing position. It doesn't have to stop and think about it. It doesn't think about what the perspective angle should be, but it's seen so many perspective angles that it knows intuitively what it will look like. If it's in the wrong place, it's not necessarily that the brain understands what the problem is, but it understands that there's a problem. The line looks wrong. But if we correct the mistake, as, as much as is possible to correct, then we give the brain the correct line to see, the correct line to focus on. We let it see what it expects to see. And so it pounces on that and uses that line to read meaning into our drawing, to work out what it's seen. It sees the correct line and tends not to notice the wrong one, if at all, nearly as much. If we don't put the correct line in, if we're afraid of making it worse, then the brain will only see the incorrect line and at the very least will think something's not right there. And very importantly, the wrong line, certainly at the start, we need to leave alone, need to keep the ink away. Don't try and go over it, don't make it heavy. We just need to give a bit of space in our drawing with that error because we will come back to it. The next thought is, is there an immediate way I can disguise it? For instance, if the perspective angle needs to be a little bit higher, can I draw a second line under the correct one that sort of encloses the error line? And I can kind of work that into my drawing. And I find with architecture, with cornices, with gutters, it's very possible to do that. In fact, that's a very standard strategy in my drawing. I, I would use that in virtually every drawing I do for perspective angles that aren't quite right. Is there a value possibility to hide my, my error line? Is there a shadow being cast that can cover the line that's in the wrong place? Or can I do some extra hatching lines to come over the top of this? Or is there a compositional possibility? Can I reposition something in the scene 
to help hide the marks that are in the wrong place. And foliage is a tremendous opportunity to hide things behind. I have shifted many a tree to change a silhouette of something that was in front of the darker tree line. Or I've moved many bushes slightly to cover up something that's not quite right. But all of these things are easier to do in the second half of the drawing, which is why we need to persevere and get to the second half because we can see more possibilities to disguise what's happened the further our drawing progresses. You know, and lastly, as I touched on before, there is a skill to learn here, correcting mistakes, lessening their impact. The skill isn't just learning not to make them, though that is a skill, but that mistakes are such a constant companion to our drawing that we need to put effort into learning the skill of correcting them. I do very, very, very few drawings I don't finish. And the ones I do finish all have lines and marks that aren't quite where I wanted them, but I've learned how to hide them. But by persevering with drawing after I've made mistakes, I've learned how to make them not an issue in most cases. And you can too. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If this is a big problem for you, I have a couple of videos on dealing with perfectionism as an artist that you might find helpful. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, however many mistakes you make, and whatever ways you manage to correct them, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.